Hello and welcome to the Sweet Granny's Garden. Now this video is going to be short and sweet. I'm going to take you down to the end of the garden to the future woodland garden and show you my new Japanese maple. And here she is. Acer Palmatum Sango Kaku. Well, that's the label. There she is. Oops, can you see her? Wait. <laughs> now her role in this woodland garden is going to be to block this area between the Portuguese laurel and the prunus up here and the crown of the Russian olive there. There used to be a tree here. When I arrived here first, it was a dead tree, or at least half dead. It was a Russian olive. I'm extremely wary of Russian olives because this actually proved a point. They, unless you're really, really on top of them, I'm going to show you on the other part of the garden now, you have to really stake them when they're young. If not, they lean perilously. And the problem with these type of leaning trees, the wood is very, very dense, very, very heavy. They grow really, really tall very quickly. And they have a shallow root system. So they have a tendency to fall over when they're mature. And this is what has happened here. You can see the inclination there on the actual trunk itself. And where this acer now is planted, which made it very easy to plant for me, the root system here had actually lifted up and it was in danger of falling. So I had to go down very, very quickly and get permission from the local council to be able to remove it. And if it had fallen, it would have taken all of the internet for the entire street down. Can you imagine that? New neighbor and one week into the project, she leaves the whole street without any internet. I would have been so popular. The other thing I don't like about Russian olives is they are constantly shedding leaves. From May onwards, it is constant. Every time you mow the lawn, it is full of these leaves. And the last thing I don't like about them is they've got thorns like this. Wicked! Because of the danger of affecting those internet lines, I got a professional company in to take this tree down. And as soon as he saw it, his words, not mine, he said, Oh my God, not a Russian olive. Sorry. Now, Sangokako is hardy from zones 5 through 8 and height-wise she'll get to about 20 foot and I'm 5 foot 4 so she's just around the 5 foot mark right now but ultimate height is going to be about 20 plus feet high and width 15 foot wide so she's going to fill this gap absolutely beautifully and block that morning sun because right down here where I've got my finger is an oak leaf hydrangea and I need that protection from the morning sun because she's got protection from the evening sun. I want dappled shade hitting her in the morning and full shade hitting her in the afternoon. Because remember, this is Spain. Here the sun in the afternoon is absolutely brutal. So things need to be protected. The Sango Kaka herself is going to get morning sun, which is fine for her. But when the real heat hits, she's going to get protected by the magnolia, by the prunus, by the laurel. So she's going to be well protected and well taken care of. And also she's going to be protected from wind because these guys do not like, well guys, I always call them girls because my ones are always girls. Because she doesn't like strong winds or cold winds or really warm winds, any type of strong wind. And she's going to be really, really protected in here. When I get the fence up, and that's a whole new story, I kept my part of the bargain. By the beginning of August, I had all this stripped back of ivy. I had the stumps removed. Everything was all waiting and ready for the workmen who never came. And they still haven't come. So we're now looking to see if we can get alternative or we'll end up putting some sort of fence up ourselves, a temporary fence to be able to block the light because there's too much light and too little privacy at the moment from the road. So within the next two months, we're going to get that sorted one way or the other. But now back to my Sango Kaku. Now, another name for this Japanese maple is the coral bark. You can't really see it at the moment. You might be able to see sort of a slight reddish tinge. But once it gets colder, the cold is going to bring out this beautiful red color on the younger branches. And when the leaves fall off, it gives great winter interest. As you see at the moment, the leaves are in their summer state, which are basically green. And it's very like difficult to distinguish from other maples at this time of year. In early spring, she's going to have a very pale green, almost yellowish, with a little margin of pinky red. But in autumn, she goes a bright, beautiful yellow. And the bark will already start tinging. So you're going to get the beautiful red branches or coral branches with a bright yellow leaf. I'm just going to put a photograph up because it's something to be seen. Absolutely stunning. Now, when I'm taking care of any type of Japanese maple and probably particularly the Sango Kako, I'm going to class her mentally as a rose. Obviously she's not a rose, but I have to be more vigilant. When I do my rounds in the morning, my daily rounds in my garden, the roses, you're always slightly more on top of them. You're like turning over the leaves. Do they have aphids? Do they have leaf spot? Is there something wrong? And this little girl, you need to do exactly the same thing. 
She can be prone to aphids, but we all know if you catch aphids in the bud, all you've got to do is hold it with a strong jet of water, blub, 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 and all the aphids disappear onto the ground and they won't crawl back up again. Other pests just be on top of. And there is one thing that could be a death nail, which would be the verticillium, and we just cross our fingers and hope that doesn't hit us. Hopefully, because she is an absolute beauty and I certainly want to have her for many, many years to come. Now what I'd like to do is take you up to the other end of the garden to show you how my other Japanese maple, the Shin de Sheisho, is getting on because it is absolutely gorgeous. Just before we go here, I just want to show you now how we're doing this woodland garden and how I'm going to be able very soon to plant it up. Now giving afternoon shade, I've got the magnolia, I've got my prunus, I've got my crepe myrtle there, and I've got my Italian cypress here. This is the Portuguese laurel, and it gives, it's an evergreen, and it gives very, very deep shade. So down here I'm going to be able to put things that require a lot more shade. I've just tried out some hookah there as well, and I've got some geraniums over there. And then in this area, this is the oak leaf hydrangea, which if I pull back, will fill in this area here. And behind it I'm going to have the Japanese maple, the Sangokako, which is going to give dappled shade to the area around that because it's going to fill between here and here. All of this area is going to be filled by that Sangokako. There's the quite large Forsythia as well. And I have got a problem here because this is a mountain ash. Well, was a mountain ash. I'm just going to get closer. This is one of the few dead trees that I haven't had time to do anything with. It had one single branch, I don't know if you can see it there, that had leaves this year. The rest of it is completely dead and is full of borers. Now, my idea is, instead of taking it down, is to plant a climbing hydrangea, let it run up and spread out there, and that's going to block some more of this easterly sun before it heads over that way in the garden. And of course, here I have my ordinary olive tree. I said before in the video, quite wrongly, it was a Russian olive. It's not my ordinary olive. Got olive on the brain. And actually, a Russian olive is not an olive at all. It's just there's some similarity in the leaf structure, and that's why people say it. But, but obviously, that's where the similarity ends. And of course, back here, I've got my Mahonia shrubs. I've got two of them. So this area, all in all, when the fence is up, is going to be either dappled shade or full shade. And I'm going to be able to plant then shade-loving perennials and lots of shade bulbs. Isn't she just amazing? Right where I'm hunkering down, that's where she used to be, which is about a foot higher than where she is now. This is her permanent position. I put her up here in the beginning because she was smaller and I wanted to give her a little bit of pride of place until she opened out a bit. Now she's got so big, I can now put her in her permanent position. So she's now got room to splay out over the gravel path behind, which is very, very wide. And to come to about here, leaving plenty of room to get by with wheelbarrows, people walking, everything. Now the weather has started to cool down considerably, which in Spain means storms. The temperature is going to drop between today and tomorrow, about 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And in Spain, at the beginning of the summer and at the end of the summer, you, because of the difference in temperature between the upper and the lower layers of the atmosphere, it causes the most amazing storms, terrific electrical storms, nothing like what I was used to when I lived in Ireland. And of course, rain, lots and lots of rain. Hopefully not too destructive, but I'm going to be keeping my eye out for the more delicate plants. As you can see, because of the cooler weather, the plants have already detected that a change of season is in the air. And she's just beginning to put on the first little tinges of fall color. So hopefully within the next two to three weeks, she's going to have her autumn gown for us. And we, then we can compare the autumn gown that the Shinde Sheishu has and the autumn gown that our Sango Kako puts on for us. What a display. Beautiful scarlet red, beautiful golden yellow. Something to look forward to. And certainly I'm going to be giving you updates for the moment from me and from my two Acer Japonicas. It's bye now and I'll see you next week here in Granny's Garden. Bye bye now. Something else that has just detected the change of season is the Panicle Hydrangea Vanilla Strawberry. She's got her first tinges of pink in those flowers. See you next week.